you from? Where are you? Uh, I'm from Finland. Finland, oh, I see. Far away. <laughs> Very far away. Yes. Thank you so much. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer and today I'm gonna take a photo walk here in Pudu area in Kuala Lumpur and I have my 40 millimeter f2.5 Sony lens with me attached on my Sony a7 IV camera body and ever since I left Finland I've been itching to shoot on this lens this is my only autofocus prime lens uh, that I have on this trip but so far it's been somehow so busy I haven't had time to use this lens but today I'm going to do it Today's photo walk does not have any specific theme. I just uh, photograph whatever I see, maybe a couple of portraits, maybe it's just some light and shadow compositions and uh, whatever is happening around me, just to keep my eyes open, observe and uh, catch what I can. Forty millimeters is such a nice focal length and it is slowly becoming my favorite focal length which used to be a 35 millimeter before this and this is also the same effective focal length as I have on my uh, uh, Ricoh GR3X so very familiar angle of view and uh, very suitable for this kind of uh, photo walking and street photography I really like the size of this lens and this combo too. I mean, it's uh, really tiny for a full frame setup. And one of the nice things with full frame is that uh, you don't really need super, super fast lenses, uh, even if you would like to create some background blur or bokeh. This f2.5 is plenty fast. This lens also handles beautifully and I simply love the aperture ring which feels super nice. It's got to be one of the nicest aperture rings there is in existence. <laughs> The lens hood that comes with the lens is also very practical. It has such a like a small opening in the front. So if I had to shoot, let's say, in some sort of uh, rain, for example, the raindrops are not likely to get onto the front lens unless I point the lens upwards. So this is one of the most practical lens hoods I have seen for a long time. Pull the mask. Yeah. yeah, better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The autofocus of this lens amazes me every time I use it, especially with the Sony a7 IV. And part of the amazement is also the Sony autofocus implementation, which is so good. You just point the camera or the focus point at your main subject and then you can do whatever you want and the focus just keeps following the main subject no matter what. It makes photography almost too easy. Smoke a little bit. Smoke! <laughs> yeah, some smoke. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, one for me, one for me. <laughs> you see that, uh, that This full frame camera setup, even with a small lens, it is of course a lot bigger than my GR3X that I normally use as my go to uh, street camera or walk around camera, everyday carry camera, that's the correct term. But uh, now that I'm purposely taking a photo walk, I don't mind carrying this camera setup, and it's not that big and heavy after all uh, compared to any other system camera. Yeah. 
Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, well, sure. Uh, no, no, please. No, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Thank you. Today, my camera settings are Aperture Priority Auto ISO and the reason I'm not using P today as I normally do with for example with my Ricoh is the depth of field characteristics of the full frame camera and lens I want to be able to control my depth of field a little bit better and aperture priority is perfect for that Can I take a picture? <laughs> Thank you, Thank you. Like I said, I'm using auto ISO and in some of the photos you may notice that the ISO value is a little bit on the high side, but I don't really care with this Sony, it doesn't really matter whether it's ISO 100 or ISO uh, 1000, it really doesn't matter that much. I don't pay much attention to the ISO value, I just uh, select the aperture I want and let the auto ISO do whatever it is doing. There's a very good reason why in some of the pictures the ISO value kind of creeps up. It's because I've chosen my auto ISO settings in the camera so that the, the shutter speed never goes uh, below 1 80th of a second. So that's why even in some bright daylight shots sometimes the ISO goes above 100. Thank you. Today I'm not walking alone. I'm walking with uh, someone behind me. Uh, sometimes it's nice to walk with a friend. It has its upsides and downsides. But since Robin is back there, I'm gonna ask him about his favorite focal length, which is 40 millimeters. How do you like 40 millimeters? <laughs> hey Matty, thanks for having me in your video. Very happy to be here again. Um, 40 millimeters for me is a very weird focal length. Um, before I talk about 40 millimeters, uh, my favorite focal length is 50, 50 equivalent. Uh, I also have to say that I don't quite like 35. So I try, I really try my best. I've bought a lot of uh, 35 equivalent lenses. I even had a Fuji X100, which is equivalent to 35 and I try Try to love the focal length. I still don't love it. I don't hate it. I just don't love it. So 40 millimeters is like in between 35 and 50. So it kind of like in the middle of nowhere for me. <laughs> I guess like sometimes the way I use my lens is I like the 50 millimeters because there's less distortion in the background. I, I'm talking about perspective distortion and it looks more flattering for portraits. I take a lot of people portraits so the facial features look more proportionate and flattering. And 40 can give me that. Uh, it's a little bit better than 35 but I still feel that it's too close to 35 and personally if I will have to choose 35, 40 or 50, I'll choose 35 and 50 <laughs> than having the 40. And I've, I've actually had the Canon 40, a fantastic uh, pancake lens for my 5D and I gave it to a friend already and I still kept the Canon 35 and Canon 50. So what are you shooting today? Ah, this is the original Olympus OMD EM1, one of my the cameras that I've used for my workhorse for many years before I upgraded to EM1 Mark II and EM1 Mark III. And the lens is? The 12-40 to f2.8 Pro. It was launched together with the camera. So a zoom lens that covers everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lazy photographer if you haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> Thank you. Sometimes it's actually quite nice to hold a big proper camera in your hand when you are taking a photo walk or something because it is a different uh, kind of feeling and uh, different sensation altogether compared to a compact camera like the Ricoh GR for example that I mostly use on my photo walks. <laughs> Salamat pagi. 
<laughs> Thank you. I think it's really nice to be able to pick up another camera for another day. And sometimes I think it can be also a good idea to pick up another camera because um, it can help you to see things in, a, in another way, in a different way. For example, if you have a compact camera with only a back screen, no viewfinder, you'll probably take another type of look at your subjects or targets uh, compared to a bigger camera with a viewfinder and also the ergonomics and everything, it affects your photography. So sometimes it can be a good idea to pick up another camera for another day. Alessia uh Sama! -huh. Wow, my handsome man! Uh, thank you, thank, thank you. you! Shooting street on a full frame camera can be a little bit more challenging compared to uh, a small sensor camera because uh, I have to pay much more attention to my aperture settings. The depth of field is more limited compared to a small sensor camera. But then again, there's another way to look at it. A full frame setup offers me much more control over the depth of field. I can have a shallow depth of field or a lot of depth of field if I go all the way to F22. So I guess there are at least two ways to look at everything. It's been a super nice photo walk here in Pudu, Kuala Lumpur this morning. Uh, thanks for walking with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please consider buying me a cup of coffee. There's a link down below for that if you don't live in Finland. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.